Something weird happened in this kitchen recently. I'm trying to figure out what it was. I feel like it has something to do with corn. Well, it was probably nothing, but the important thing is that we are back here. We are ready to do it to them. Every episode in the summer is gonna have my glasses fogging up, but, but that's fine. Cause if you can't handle the heat, then don't wear glasses and also get out of the kitchen. Get out of the kitchen anyway, this is my kitchen. Actually, come back, you can, you can stay. Just don't make so much noise. First of all, welcome back to the kitchen, me. Thank me, I'm welcome. It's been a couple of weeks since I made a cooking video. It is our infamous dog birthday month where all of June we just celebrate our dog's birthdays because all four of our dogs are somehow Geminis and they get that month. We have 11 months of the year to ourselves, they get the 12th month. Who am I kidding? All 12 months are for them. It was a good little uh, change of pace, but now we are back in the kitchen ready to do it to them. And I'm very excited. I'm like very, very excited today. On Twitter, I asked you guys what you wanted me to cook and I got a lot of really great ideas. Some were like barbecue and America themed. And then a couple suggestions were telling me to deep fry ice cream, which really speaks to my soul. Somehow I ended up on sushi. So we're gonna be cooking a really easy plant-based delicious sushi recipe today um, for all my people out there who like sushi and um, never learned how to make it. The thing about sushi, and I've made vlogs where I've showed you like how I make it sort of, but I figured I would do a whole episode on it because it's a lot simpler than a lot of people think to make a roll of sushi at your house. You don't need any crazy equipment. You could honestly do everything I'm doing without the rice cooker. You could cook rice in a pot or in the microwave. I'm gonna be using just normal seaweed, nori. Uh, you can also use soy paper, which I can do a variant of today as well. So if you prefer soy paper, the best part is you don't even need to buy or know how to buy expensive fish because we're not using fish. This soy boy, it's gonna be using high protein tofu. This is actually some really, really good tofu. I've been using it a lot lately for a lot of different recipes. Uh, it comes already like kind of pressed, so you don't need to press it, which is really nice. We're gonna have some fresh vegetables like cucumber and green onion. And then we're gonna have not vegetables like uh, oil and uh, spicy mayo, things like that. I have the rice cooking right now. So at any moment, it might chime in and tell me, hey, I'm ready for you to eat me. So get your chopsticks and if, you don't like using chopsticks and you just prefer to turn off the lights and use your hands so no one sees, get your light switch ready. We're about to eat some sushi. One of the things that made me wanna make this a video uh, is because of the amount of people asking me for easy everyday plant-based recipes that are not complicated and not deep fried ice cream, which I'm going to do, but like things that are practical and you can count on to be staples in your diet. If you really love sushi, you can make this every day if you want. So we're gonna start simple. Maybe another time we can get crazy with what we're putting in the sushi, but today it's just gonna be simple. So step one is we gotta prepare our tofu. So you're gonna get your tofu, whether it's this kind, which is kind of like pre-pressed. You're gonna take your induction cooker that is actually the brand that you ordered, not a ripoff that Amazon sent you that's $70 less. And you're gonna put it to the side because we gotta get our cutting board out and get our trusty knife. One of my favorite things about making sushi is that you get to use a knife. Before we start cutting though, we are gonna need Szechuan peppercorns. So we're gonna take a handful of Szechuan peppercorns and we're gonna put it in our mortar and pestle and we are just gonna grind this baby up. Uh, this is gonna be used to kind of give the tofu a little nice Asian spice and heat to it. This peppercorn has really good flavor and I use it for a lot of dishes. Kind of doing it like a caveman here. You could get like a grinder for it. The faster you do it, the more messy it is. That's what she said. Oh, wow, that was so inappropriate. Peach, did... no jokes like that in this kitchen. You understand? I hope you understand that we can't be making jokes like that in this kitchen. This is a family friendly video and channel here, okay? So we're gonna get our peppercorn and we're gonna set it off to the side because we don't need it right now. And we're gonna cut open our tofu package. And I'm actually gonna cut it into thirds lengthwise, hot dog style. Actually, is this hamburger style? Is this hamburger or hot dog? I don't even know. And we are gonna just place them next to each other and give it a little press, get all the last bit of moisture out. This high protein tofu does a really good job of like mimicking the texture of some sort of meat. I don't know exactly what. And I am just going to cut it into like long strips like this. And this is what we're gonna use as sort of the meat and the main 
ingredient of our sushi. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna coat all of the tofu in cornstarch and sprinkle in the peppercorn with a little bit of salt. And so this is gonna sort of just serve as our seasoning. This is for the texture and this is for the flavor. It appears we have made a mistake. I just did a bad thing. I regret the thing that I did. So we're gonna put a little bit of cornstarch at the bottom of the bowl to just kind of coat it so the tofu does not stick. So this is actually kind of a magical technique. You can, and I think I've done this before um, on the channel, but you can use cornstarch to make tofu really, really crispy and it's like, takes two seconds. So sprinkle in some of our Szechuan peppercorn. Make sure it's all ground up so you're not getting bites of like peppercorn. Oh, well, that was easy. Am I right? Anyone? Okay, so we're gonna fucking fry, baby. So you're gonna take your vegetable oil. That's one more ingredient I didn't include. You're gonna need vegetable oil. And you're gonna put about like a half quarter inch layer of oil in the pan. It's like more like a quarter, not even. Something even a little lighter. This is how we make delicious tasting tofu right here. This is actually a super dope recipe to cook for other people. You know, if you're hosting and you wanna say, hey, I'm gonna make sushi. I mean, that's like brownie points, I think. I think people will get impressed by people who can make sushi. So become the person who can make sushi and then you'll become the favorite friend. Stacy won't be up your ass anymore about that one time that you didn't feed her at your party when you didn't even know she was coming. Okay, looks hot enough. Here we go. And so now we're gonna let this tofu turn beautiful and then we'll be ready to move on to the next step. So be beautiful and go, be beautiful now, go. All right, baby, tofu is almost ready. I will say the thinner, the little strips, the, the more crispy they're gonna get. So err on the side of making them little skinny legend pieces of tofu. I think there's some sort of stain on this outfit. I don't know where it came from. Like, see, see how this completely holds its shape? This is what you want here. I will also say that I've shown a way of making this before, but if you don't like tofu or if tofu is not your thing, you can get mushrooms actually and cut the ends off of shiitake, large shiitake mushrooms. You cut the ends so it's a long strip and that works well with a tempura batter. The tofu is done. That is honestly the hardest part. You can do that part. I like your style, you know what I mean? I like your style. We have our tofu ready. Now it's time to prep the rest of the ingredients. And we have rice. This is beautiful. We are gonna let it cool for a sec and then we are gonna add what we need to add to this to make it actual sushi rice. While that cools off, I'm gonna cut the end off of this cucumber and cut through the wonderful packaging. Your knife is gonna need to be sharp and beautiful and a good knife, uh, or it can be a bad knife. I'm not here to judge you. And we are gonna just cut lengthwise, or as we like to call it in this household, hot dog style, down the center. And you're just gonna cut long strips that can go the length of a sushi roll. The cucumber adds like a really nice, refreshing flavor profile to the sushi. And I'm gonna cut these in half. So now we have our cucumber done, easy. Easy peasy. Now we're gonna make our spicy mayo. Literally pretty much just re requires mayo uh, and chili oil. Then we're gonna take our tiny little whisk that some people like to make fun of us for. And we're gonna turn this into a little spicy mayo. Then we're gonna set our beautiful spicy mayo to the side with our cucumber. We are getting there, guys. It is almost sushi time. Okay, next is a super important part that I think might be the biggest takeaway from this video, and it is how to make sushi rice taste like sushi rice. Uh, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take 
pinch of salt and a pinch of sugar, and you're gonna toss it in the rice. And then a couple swigs of rice vinegar. This is the key ingredient right here. This is what is gonna make it taste like that distinctive sushi rice that you know and love so well. You don't wanna overwork it. You just wanna make sure everything's evenly coated. A little more rice vinegar. Since we can't make sushi with hot ass rice, we are gonna need a flat vessel to place our rice. We're gonna do it in a really Aries way like this. And then you're just gonna spread it out. And this is literally just so the rice can cool. Uh, if you put this in a sushi roll right now, it would make everything fall apart. So you need, you, you can have the rice be warm, like a little warm, but anything like hot like this would ruin the whole, the whole roll. So we're gonna let this chill. And uh, when it's a good temperature, we're gonna make our sushi and we are gonna do this when we're done eating. This thing, you know, because it's that good. Right, Peach? Uh, I don't think you're, you're authorized to be here, miss. Hey, can't eat while you're on the job, okay? Not your rice. This is for the customer, okay? Okay, that's enough. Back in your bed. Sous chef. We are just gonna cut. Hey, hey, drop it. Oh my God. She just stole a piece. Hey, drop it. Peach just stole an entire piece. Hold up. All right, you're getting, you have security cam on you now, Peach. No, don't try anything. Don't try anything. I'm watching you. I set up the camera, okay? All right, so we are gonna, Take our green onion, and this is just a really small kind of garnish type of ingredient. And you're gonna cut it lengthwise. And you're only gonna need like one little sliver of this per roll, but it's just to give it that like nice little touch. Um, sous chef. Hey, uh, drop it, drop it. Oh. I think you're fired. I think you're, I think we have to fire you. Okay, y'all, now it's uh, the moment of truth here. Um, so before we get to rolling, you are going to need your spicy mayo, a bowl of water. Tell you later why we need that. Your cucumber, green onion, your tofu, and lastly, your nori or soy paper, whatever you prefer to roll sushi in, because that's just how we roll. <laughs> okay, so I believe, and I could be wrong here, but I believe you're gonna take the shiny side of the nori and have that be down. Okay, so the purpose of the water is so the rice doesn't stick to your paws, okay? So we're gonna bring the rice right here and we're gonna roll our first roll. Here we go. So you're gonna dip your tips of your fingers into the water, a little bit of uh, moisture on there. Then you're gonna take a bit of rice, not too much, and you're gonna flatten it out across the bottom like third of the nori sheet. You're gonna take um, a little scoop of spicy mayo and you're gonna kind of distribute it evenly. Take a couple pieces of cucumber and two pieces of tofu with some sesame seeds and just a little tiny sliver of the green onion. And then we're gonna roll this up. So you're gonna just go from the bottom and you're just like rolling it like a burrito. Keep it tight. And then at the very end, you dip your finger in water and you're gonna layer that last bit, sort of like sealing an envelope, and that's what's gonna keep it shut. Then you're gonna take this little bamboo sheet, if you have one, you use it, and you're gonna make it sort of square. And you're, this is just to shape it a little bit. You roll it over one more time and do it again. This just makes it cleaner, tighter, easier to cut, and now it's cutting time. I'm gonna quickly sharpen my knife. Okay, I should have done that before starting this video. We're gonna disregard those pieces. Uh, my whetstones are my favorite thing I've ever bought, and this is why. I guess you can't call it Aries Kitchen for nothing. As quick as I cut myself, I bandaged myself too. Gotta keep those knuckles out, fingers in. So this is our roll here. I'm trying to like lay it out so it's beautiful, but the reality is it's not beautiful. It just does the job. This is at least how I do it. You're gonna take uh, some wasabi, mix it with some soy sauce, and you're just gonna mix that around so it becomes sort of spicy soy sauce, which is what I like. If you're a wasabi person, you know what I'm feeling here. And this is how we do it here. 
Dip it in. Y'all, we just made sushi and it is damn good. It is damn good. So that is like probably one of my favorite foods to make and eat. This whole entire thing took just over an hour. You could probably do it quicker with a little bit of prep, but the reality is like sushi is not hard. You can make this. If cut rolls are not your jam, we can do hand rolls. You can do it one-handed if you just cut your finger like myself. Yes, Peach, you had your chance to be up here and then you stole the food on camera and got caught. And so there's two ways to make a hand roll. You can roll it up completely even just like you would a long roll. This is sort of a one way to make the hand roll, which is just kind of like a mini burrito, which is totally fine. Uh, but if you want to get fancy, you're going to go from the back corner and you're going to roll at an angle. What you're doing is you're closing off one corner and opening up the other corner. And you're going to do the same thing with the water at the end. And then you're going to put the whole thing on a cutting board shape like a surfboard. So make sure you have a sharp knife. Make sure you don't cut yourself and make sure you impress your friends with sushi that you made with your bare hands and without fish. It's actually really delicious. So this is it. This is your little uh, surfboard of sushi. I really hope that you guys can make some use out of this recipe because I feel like people are scared and intimidated by making sushi when in reality it's a really easy process. And you do it a couple times, you get good at it, then that's that. You know how to make sushi. Well, I figured we have soy paper, so let's let's make a roll with soy paper. I also didn't mention yet, but huge shout out to my wonderful mother for raising me. Number one, thanks for raising me. Appreciate you. Um, also teaching me how to make sushi when I was a kid. This is like a really cool pastime of mine. And I'm really like happy to have learned this skill at such a young age. By the way, my mom is the most Aries person in the world. If you think I'm an Aries, you're you're in for it. And I was thinking it would be fun to have a mother-son episode of Aries Kitchen. So let me know if you think that would be fun. I don't know. Also, if you came here looking for a roll with rice on the outside, uh, you can probably find that somewhere else. I, I'm not good at that. <laughs> Ready to try some sush? All right, Jenna, you gotta try the sush. I'm playing with a mom and dad and son and I asked if I could be their daughter. They said yes. You're you're in the middle of a game? Yeah. With a family? Yeah. That's not our family? Exactly. Okay, we'll have a bite of sushi of your choosing. This is the kind that I like. I like when it has this wrapper with the sesame seeds. Called it. Mm. Oh, that's so good. It's good, right? I don't like sushi, I like that. I don't like the seaweed ones, I like those ones. You're not a sushi fan and this is good to you? Why I think, I it? Dude, she stole a whole piece of tofu and I caught it on camera. You're guilty. Okay, I won't go. That's good. Hang on. All right, good luck in your dungeon. And do I have any family now? Bye. Oh. Oh, bye. There's sushi, I made it, and now you can too. So uh, make this, tweet pictures of it at me, and next week, sorry, that was really aggressive. Next week is the 4th of July. I wanna do a barbecue themed recipe. I might finally try my hand at some jackfruit. We'll see. Stay tuned.